Hey kiddies, Triple Feature Tuesday is back. Uh, this week we're going to look at movies that invite you to come for the monster, but stay for the soul-crushing dread. Yes, we're back, hopefully. I've been having computer problems, and I know you guys have missed me so. That's right, these are three horror movies that feature, like, big, scary monster threats, but they're actually suspense movies in disguise. But as an added bonus, the monsters they do have are actually that terrifying. It's really, really wonderful. And in all of these movies, there's a good theme of uh, spreading the crazy and the madness around to other people. So that's a lot of fun and, you know, nice thematic tie-in. So our menu is going to include In the Mouth of Madness, It Follows, and The Ring. I like starting off any triple feature with the last part of a different triple feature or trilogy. In the Mouth of Madness is the third and final part of what John Carpenter has dubbed his Apocalypse Trilogy, which uh, starts with The Thing, continues with Prince of Darkness, and ends with In the Mouth of Madness, in which all three of them, John Carpenter is trying to figure out better ways to destroy all life as we know it on the planet Earth. In the Mouth of Madness, uh, the delivery system has evolved into pop culture, a popular book by the greatest living horror writer, Sutter Kane. Do you read Sutter Kane? You know, equal parts Stephen King and H.P. Lovecraft, Sutter Kane's books are so good they actually warp reality. Or he is merely a vessel for the old ones to return. Carpenter sets uh, the tone right in the beginning with uh, our man Sam Neill, uh, John Trent fraud investigator being thrown into a mental hospital and then getting uh, this random montage of scary scenes from the rest of the movie. And then the rest of the movie is putting those scenes together in context, in building the dread. There is something coming. It is involved with Sutter Kane, and it's very, very terrifying. But as the movie progresses, the monsters do get worse. The old ones are there. You get glimpses of them, and every glimpse you get is terrifying. But the real thing is just this buildup. It's very similar to uh, Prince of Darkness in that sense, in which uh, we have a big bad that is coming. But, you know, we're not going to actually see it. But we're going to, you know, get the buildup to it, which is impressive. John Carpenter, clearly a horror director but never gets enough credit for his Hitchcockian ability to tease the audience and put them in a mood and keep them there for 90 minutes. Look at Hall the original Halloween. It is not the scariest movie, but you are in a perpetual state of dread about what is lurking in the background. Where is Michael Myers? And this one, uh, in The Math of Madness, you get that, but the Michael Myers is the old ones. It's Chitulu coming back. So uh, it, it's even scarier. Uh, next up, we have the recent edition It Follows, uh, written and directed by David Robert Mitchell. This one is a lot of fun and just plays on so many different, different metaphorical levels. It's beautiful. Uh, our main character, Jay, uh, is uh, going out with this guy for a while and uh, proceeds to go all the way with the guy and only to have him uh, chloroform her and explain that he has given her an, F an STC, a sexually transmitted curse. There is an apparition, a thing. It. It is going to follow you, follow Jay, or you if you're unlucky enough, uh, for the rest of your life until you give it to somebody else. And it, if it catches, catches you, is going to kill you in some sort of horribly revolting way. This is established in the beginning of the movie where we see it catch up to uh, this poor girl. Uh, so we get the setup in the beginning. And then, so we know it's going to happen, and it's going to be scary throughout the rest of the movie, waiting to see if Jay can get around it or get away from it. And it's just a very, very clever setup. Uh, it follows, uh, takes a lot of different cues from Halloween to great effect. It's not copying it, but it's using slasher and horror film tropes in a different way, because this thing is always following you. It never goes away. It's only walking after you, but... 
imagine you're sleeping for eight hours, it's going to catch up with you. You have to be on the lookout for it for the rest of your life or give it to someone else and hope that that person gives it to someone else and then that person gives it to someone else so that they are so far removed from you, maybe you can have a breather. Or you just live the rest of your life as a nomad. It, you know, you have options that don't include just giving up and dying, which all the characters have to go through throughout this movie. Uh, at the same time, the actual apparition is terrifying. It appears as different things, and a few of them are really downright scary and terrifying, and it's just wonderful. It Falls just came out on DVD, so rent it, enjoy it, and oh my god, the music. The music for all of these movies is really good. Uh, John Carpenter did the movie music for In the Mouth of Madness, of course. It doesn't actually fit the movie In the Mouth of Madness tonally, but it's just a great soundtrack. This one, Disaster Piece, does the whole score for It Follows, and it's a very, very retro 80s slasher type of uh, soundtrack that plays beautifully. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's really, really creepy and wonderful, like the rest of the movie. And finally, we have The Ring. Gore Verbinski's American remake of the Japanese horror film Ringu, based on Ring by Koji Suzuki. Love this book. It's actually, the Ring books, Ring, Spiral, and Loop, uh, they follow a much, much different, more sci-fi path than the horror movies do, so if uh, you want something really interesting, Highly recommend the books. Really, really fascinating. Gord Rubinsky's Ring is brilliant. It is probably one of the la like the last truly scary movies I've ever seen. Although I just saw the Babadook and that was really, really creepy. But the Ring was the last one that I really had to like. I got to the end of the movie and it was like, okay, let's turn all the lights on. In the world, I started knocking on other people's homes and, you know, making them turn their lights on so there would be enough light so that Samara wouldn't get me. Gore does a great job of setting the tone with uh, the two girls in the beginning of the film, talking about the rumors and then finding out the rumors are actually about one of them, and then the horrible thing happens. And for the rest of you, you don't exactly see what the horrible thing is. You get a little glimpse of what happened after the horrible thing. But so, because you don't know what the horrible thing is, you are making up what the horrible thing is. And you're wondering, when is the horrible thing going to happen again? And that is the genius of the ring. Because if you look at it, the scares during the movie aren't that terrifying. It's just like little creepy things and little jumps every so often. And, you know, horrific hallucinations. But you're waiting for the horrible thing to happen again. And it doesn't. We save the day. And that's when the really brilliant thing happens. Spoiler alert for a movie that's over 10 years old. Just when you think the horrible thing has been completely avoided, that's when the horrible thing happens. Oh my god, and what a horrible thing. It's just great because you get all the dread and the suspense, and then once you, you, you're comfortable again, that's when Gore nails you. And it is every bit as terrifying as you thought it was going to be. <laughs> fucking, fucking ring, man. And once again, incredible soundtrack. Uh, frequent Gore Verbinski collaborator Hans Zimmer provides a suitably string-based creepy soundtrack through the bulk of the movie, and it's just wonderful. Great performances by everybody. Everybody's great in it, uh, in all of these movies I haven't mentioned. Especially It Follows features a lot of unknown people uh, I think the main girl playing Jay has been in a few things, but predominantly, you know, new people to me, and they were all great. Naomi Watts and uh, Martin Henderson in uh, The Ring, wonderful. Or Sam Neill as John Trent, and just everybody else in uh, in The Mouth of Madness. Just, this is a really great horror triple feature, and uh, just compiling it uh, among friends, they were, you know, freaking out and thinking about how rough it would be, so we got to do it at some point in real life. Uh, hopefully my computer problems are over, and I will see you guys on a more regular basis again. Uh, see you then.